Hello everyone, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of ScienceInHydroponics.com and today we are going to be talking about what happens when you have a large facility and you want to get a nutrient solution program that is accurate. So basically, we're going to be talking about nutrient solutions in large facilities. So basically, whenever you need to prepare large amounts of your own nutrient solutions, how do you make sure that your solutions are accurately prepared? And how do you carry out the entire process? So first of all, let's talk about the steps in the process of making nutrient solutions. So first of all, we have the inputs, which are the raw fertilizers that you buy. Then with these inputs, we need to make stock solutions, or this is usually how it's done in large facilities. So we make stock solutions. And then from these stock solutions, then we finally make the nutrient, the nutrient solutions that we feed to the plants. Now, each one of these steps carries some error. The inputs have some issues inherent to their fabrication because they can have impurities. And we have little control over the purity of the inputs besides being able to change the inputs that we buy. So assuming that we have some inputs that we need to use, then the next step is the preparation of the stock solutions. Here, we have to do two things. So we have one measurement, which is a weight measurement. So we need to weigh things. And then we have another measurement, which is a volume measurement, which is either a volume of solution or a total volume that we need to measure in order to carry out this step. So we already have two steps that introduce error going from the inputs to the stock solutions. Then from go when we go from the stock solutions to the nutrient solutions, then we have two volume measurements because we need to measure a volume of stock solution and a volume of water that ends up making the nutrient solution. So we have basically these four measurements that introduce error into the process. And what we want is to minimize these errors to ensure that they are as small as possible at a large scale. So basically in order to minimize the errors at a large scale, we first need to make sure we know the highest possible accuracy preparation we can make. For this, we start with our inputs. And we will basically do very small scale preparations using the formulation that we want to use. So this means we do a small scale stock solution preparation. And this is usually made with what we call calibrated, uh, calibrated material, which is calibrated glassware. And generally we're talking about using something like a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, which is a calibrated volumetric material that has very low error. And there's a video in the description where I go through this process and I show you exactly how this is done. Then this gives us the highest possible accuracy stock solution based on the inputs that we have. So whatever results we get from this, they're not gonna get any better when we go into the large scale. So this is like the best possible case we can hope for. Now, after we have these small scale stock solutions, then we can also make small scale dilutions using the same calibrated materials. And I also have a video on the description where I show you exactly how to make these small scale dilutions. The idea is that we get a ton of data from these two things. So first from our stock solutions, we can do, we can get a chemical analysis and this gives us the best possible match. So this is the best possible match to our formulation that we are ever going to get given the inputs that we use. So if we cannot get a good enough result here, then we need to resort to changing of our inputs because that means that one of our inputs might not be of the desired purity or it might not be what people are saying it is. Another thing that we get from these small scale preparations um, is information that we can use when we go to the larger scale. So one thing that we get is the density of the stocks, which is a great piece of data that we can use later on. And we can also get the amount, the amount of water that is required to prepare the solutions. Because remember that we are making up 
uh, a final volume that is well known. So by weighing the flasks, we can easily determine the amount of water that needs to go into the solution. And this saves us from having to measure the volumes when we do large scale preparation. It saves us from having to measure the total volume, but we can just measure the volume of water. Now, there's also a video in the description showing you exactly how to do that part of the process. So that's also very important. And here in the small scale dilutions, we get two things. We get chemical analysis, which is also like the best possible case of error propagation. So this is the, small, the smallest possible error that you're going to get going from inputs to the final solution you're going to get here. And another thing that we can get is the EC of the dilutions, of the dilutions. So this EC value of the dilutions is going to be very useful when we go to a larger scale because it will help us establish the error of injector systems. So this is great for that reason. Now, once you have done your small scale preparations, you have determined the chemical analysis of both the stock solutions and the small scale dilutions. You have the density of the stock solutions and you know the amount of water that goes into a preparation of the stock solutions. Then we are going to move to the larger scale. Now you have the same inputs and then for the large scale preparations, for the large scale stocks, then we are going to have, we ha we're going to measure our weights. And here we are going to use, we're not going to measure the total volume as we do here, but we're going to measure the volume of water needed using a flow meter. using the amount of water that we got from the small scale preparation. Now, remember that the salts take a volume and this is why if you're making a hundred liters or a hundred gallons of stock solution, this means that you do not need a hundred gallons of water. You need less than that because the salts take a volume. So it's really important to determine that amount of water at a small scale so that when you go to the larger scale, you know exactly how much water to use and the amount of water to add can be easily measured with relatively high accuracy using a flow meter. You can measure it with a plus or minus 1% accuracy if you have a good low error flow meter. Now, after we prepare this, then we can do two things. We can do a density measurement, which is a very quick way to check how close we are to the small scale stock solution, which is our best case. And then we can also do the chemical analysis. And we can check if the density matches what we have here within 1%, then we are in pretty good territory. And then the chemical analysis should be, it can have slightly more error than in this case, because this should be a really accurate preparation here at a small scale, but it shouldn't be an error that surpasses the 5% mark if this is done accurately. And then finally, we do large scale dilutions using our injector system. And when we do the large scale dilutions using our injector system, we basically can use the ECs for calibration. So we know what the ECs of the dilutions should be, and we can then use those values to calibrate the injectors. Then we basically do the chemical analysis and verify that we can get just as good of a measurement here as we do here. The EC that we got from the small scale preparations can tell us whether we hit more or less the right numbers. And then the chemical analysis is the final confirmation that we got things right. So overall, to make this entire process, you will need all the glassware for the small scale preparations. You'll need an easy meter that has at least uh, two decimal places in the measurements, ideally four, but two would be good enough. And we also need to perform one chemical analysis for each stock solution that we want to prepare. We need to measure the density for all of them. And we, to, we need to do these uh, water volume calculations for all of the stock solutions. So it is a pretty intense process in the small scale solution part, which only needs to be done once uh, or every time there is a significant change in the composition. But it is a very good step to ensure that we know our solutions really well and we know what to expect at a large scale. Then when we go to the large scale, normally we only need to carry out one chemical analysis for each stock solution and one chemical analysis for each dilution. 
and then we need to measure the density for each one of these to verify. And the good thing about the density is that we can use this measurement as a way to audit our solutions every time we prepare a large scale batch of them. And every time an input is changed, we can see what the effect it has on the density and if necessary, we can repeat the small scale part. So a lot of the steps in this, di in this diagram have already been done on videos. So there's a lot of links in the description that link to every one of these parts that you can watch so that you can know how to carry them out experimentally. Now, I hope this was very useful. Uh, really remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one and bye bye.